Hi everyone, so the lecture now is about the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system, it's given that this system is a very significant system of the body. It delivers oxygen and nutrients to the body tissues and it carries away wastes such as carbon dioxide via the blood. If the cardiovascular system cannot perform its functions, obviously, yung body organs natin, it will fail to work properly and the waste products will build up in the tissues. Eventually, once depleted with oxygen and the toxins accumulate, organs will die. What are the structures of the cardiovascular system? We have the heart and the blood vessels. The heart pumps blood and the blood vessels carry blood which transports oxygen, nutrients, among others, and also waste products to and from the cells. So most simply stated, the major functions of the cardiovascular system is transportation as it carry uh, its various cargoes back and forth, which is very vital for homeostasis. The heart is uh, the size of a person's fist it's hollow, cone-shaped, and weighs less than a pound. The modest size and weight of the heart will actually give us a few hints of how its incredible strength is. The heart is also enclosed within the inferior mediastinum. Mediastinum, as shown in the photo, is the medial section of the thoracic cavity. It is uh, flanked on each side by the lungs. The heart is pointed apex toward the left hip. It rests on the diaphragm at the fifth ICS. Please remember also that the fifth ICS, left midclavicular line, is exactly where one would place a stethoscope to count the heart rate for an apical pulse. That's the PMI or the point of maximum impulse. The heart also is broad at the base where great vessels emerge toward right shoulder beneath the second rib. So to recall, the apex is the superior of the heart while the base is the inferior of the heart. What are the coverings and walls of the heart? The heart is actually enclosed by a sac which we call the pericardium. And the pericardium has three layers. We have one, the outer fibrous layer, that's the fibrous pericardium, and second and third layer is the inner serous membrane pair. These are actually two layers of the serous pericardium. Yung fibrous layer or the fibrous pericardium, it helps protect the heart and anchors it to the surrounding structures, such as the diaphragm and the sternum. Yung serous pericardium naman, it is the visceral and the parietal layer, as shown in the photo. The parietal lines the interior of the fibrous pericardium. Sa superior aspect ng heart, itong parietal layer na ito, it attaches to the large arteries leaving the heart. And then, the uterine siya continuously doon sa inferior ng heart's surface. Yung visceral layer naman is also called the epicardium. It's a part of the heart wall. In other words, yung epicardium siya yung innermost layer ng pericardium and the outermost layer of the heart wall. Now, between these serous layers is a lubricating fluid and that allows the heart to beat easily in a relatively frictionless environment as the serous pericardial layers slide smoothly across each other, especially when the heart beats. Now, what are the heart walls? We have three layers of the heart walls, the epicardium, the myocardium, and the endocardium. See, epicardium is the visceral pericardium we just described earlier. The myocardium now 
it consists of thick bundles of cardiac muscle. Siya yung layer na nagko-contract. It is reinforced internally by a network of dense fibrous connective tissue which we call the skeleton of the heart, which is very visible in the photo. The endocardium is a thin glistening sheet of endothelium and it actually lines the heart chambers. It is continuous with the linings of the blood vessels leaving and entering the heart. Let us now discuss next the chambers of the heart. But before going on with the chambers itself, let me first uh, discuss the pulmonary and the systemic circulation. Look at the photo. Both the pulmonic and the systemic circulation is linked by our heart. The pulmonary circulation involves the action of the lungs as it receives an oxygenated blood from the pulmonary artery and sends oxygenated blood to the pulmonary vein. So, ang transition ng circulation na ito is an oxygenated to oxygenated blood. Again, the pulmonary circulation involves movement of blood to and from the lungs. Ano naman ngayon ang systemic circulation? It involves all the organ systems of the body. As each cells receive oxygenated blood from the aorta, Ginagamit ito ng lahat ng cells to function. Then, pag nagamit na ng cell, yung unoxygenated blood with the waste products will now be sent back through the vena cava. So, dito ang transition ng blood is oxygenated to unoxygenated blood. So again, when we talk about systemic circulation, it involves all the body cells. Let us now go to the chambers. As we understood now the difference between the systemic and the pulmonic circulation. Ang heart ay may apat na chambers or four hollow cavities. Dalawa dito ay atria at dalawa ventricles. Always remember that when you hear the word atria, they are the receiving or the collecting chambers. Pag naman ventricles, they are actually the discharging or the pumping chambers. Again, atria collects, ventricles pumps. So, ang right atrium collects an oxygenated blood from the systemic circulation, meaning galing sa mga body cells. The left atrium naman collects oxygenated blood from pulmonic circulation, means galing ito sa lungs. The right ventricle pumps an oxygenated blood to pulmonic circulation, papunta ng lungs. The left ventricle pumps oxygenated blood to systemic circulation, papunta ng body cells. The atria are superior and uh, the ventricles are inferior. Now, the great vessels of the heart. There are four great vessels of the heart. Ito yung nakamalalaking mga blood vessels natin sa katawan. There are two arteries and two veins. What we need to remember is the basic difference between arteries and veins. Pag sinabing arteries, ang movement ng dugo away from the heart. Pag sinabi namang vein, ang movement ng dugo towards the heart. So what now are the two arteries? So again, ang aorta at pulmonary artery, ang movement ng dugo nito away from the heart. The aorta carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to the systemic circulation. Ibig sabihin, yung dugo na daladala ng aorta, inilalabas niya papuntang lahat ng body cells. Yung pulmonary artery naman carries an oxygenated blood connecting the right ventricle to the pulmonic circulation which means yung dugong dala naman niya ay dinadala niya 
papuntang lungs. Both arteries are connected to the ventricles. So again, si aorta na nakakonect yan sa left ventricle at si pulmonary artery naman nakakonect sa right ventricle. What about the veins? Veins are the vena cava and the pulmonary vein. Again, ang movement ng dugo sa veins towards the heart. The vena cava carries an oxygenated blood. It connects the blood coming from the systemic circulation to the right atrium. So, galing sa body cells yung dala niyang dugo para makapasok ng heart. While the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood, connecting the pulmonary circulation to the left atrium. So, galing naman sa lungs yung dala-dala niyang dugo papasok ng heart. Both veins are connected in the atria. So, si vena cava, connected yan sa right atrium, at yung pulmonary vein naman, connected sa left atrium. So, again, try to recall uh, the difference between systemic and pulmonic circulation. Systemic circulation, ang blood flow niya from aorta to vena cava, oxygenated to unoxygenated blood. It involves the travel of blood na ginagamit ng system or ng ating mga body cells. Pag pulmonic circulation naman, blood flow coming from the pulmonary artery to the pulmonary vein. An oxygenated to oxygenated blood. It involves the lungs kasi doon nagkakaroon ng exchange of gases, particularly oxygen and carbon dioxide. Here, we see both the pulmonic and the systemic circulation. So again, the systemic circulation's function is to supply oxygen and nutrient-rich to all body organs. Pag naman pulmonic circulation, isa lang ang function niya. That is to carry blood to the lungs for gas exchange and return it to the heart. The left side of the heart is the systemic pump and the right side of the heart is pulmonic pump. It's easy to remember because yung right side of the heart is usually uh, denoted by color blue kasi nga an oxygenated blood ang umaandar dyan. Yun namang left side of the heart denoted by color red kasi ang dumadaan dyan ay oxygenated blood. The heart is equipped with four valves, which allow blood to flow in only one direction. Yun ang most important function ng valves of the heart. Because yung blood flow through the heart chambers, from the atria, through the ventricles, and out of the great arteries leaving the heart, back to the great veins, which will again enter the heart via atria, yung movement na yun ng dugo dapat unilateral lang or one direction and the valves allow that to happen. There are two types of valves, the atrioventricular valves and the semilunar valves. Ang atrioventricular valves, yun ang tricuspid and mitral valve. The tricuspid valve is between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The mitral valve is between the left atrium and the left ventricle. AV valves are located between the atria and ventricles on each side. So, ano yung purpose niya? Para siyang uh, nag-open and close. When the heart is relaxed and the blood is passively filling its chambers, yung AV valve cusps, they just hang limply into the ventricles. But when the ventricles contract, yung AV valves sarado siya kasi pineprevent niya yung backflow ng blood from the ventricles back to the atria. Which means kapag may bumababang dugo from the right atrium to ventricle, bukas ang tricuspid. Pag may bumababang dugo from the left atrium 
to the left ventricle, bukas din ang mitral. But, when the left and the right atrium starts to pump, parehong magsasara yung tricuspid and mitral valve because it will prevent the backflow of blood back to the atria. What about the semilunar valves? It guards the bases of the two large arteries leaving the ventricular chambers. The pulmonary valve and the mitral valve are the semilunar valves. Nasaan ang pulmonary valve? Nasa gitna naman siya ng pulmonary artery and right ventricle. Nasaan naman ang aortic valve? It's between the aorta and the left ventricle. As mentioned kanina, when the ventricles are contracting and forcing blood out of the heart, dapat nakabukas ang semilunar valves. But, ano dapat yung sarado? Pag na nakabukas silang dalawa, sarado yung tricuspid and mitral. This now prevents backflow of blood again to the atria. But, when the ventricles relax, the blood begins to flow backward toward the heart. Yung cusps, it uh, fill with blood like a parachute filling with air. Kaya magsasarado ngayon yung semilunar valves. This now prevents arterial blood from re-entering the heart. Each set of valves, remember, they operate at different times. Ang AV valves, they are open during heart relaxation and close when ventricles are contracting. Yung semilunar valves naman, they are close during heart relaxation and are forced open when the ventricles contract. Heart valves are simple devices and the heart, like any other mechanical pump, maaari pa rin siyang mag-function kahit minsan may kaunting leak as long as yung damage hindi ganun kalala. However, if there is a severely damaged or deformed valve, it can seriously hamper cardiac function. For example, may incompetent valve, pinipilit yung pusong mag-pump and repump ng blood because the valve does not close properly, nagkakaroon ng backflow. There are several reasons why valves are incompetent. One is because of valvular stenosis, meaning masikip or may narrowing yung valves. Hindi tuloy siya maka-open and close effectively. Yung valvular atresia naman, sarado yung valve. Hindi na siya nagbubukas halos. These valve problems may be caused by either congenital, pinanganak na faulty valve, and there are a lot of CHDs or congenital heart diseases causing these incompetent valves. Second is because of acquired causes dahil maaring may bacterial or viral infection like carditis, inflammation of the heart, or pericarditis, myocarditis, endocarditis, infection or inflammation of the heart walls. Now, if the heart's workload increases and ultimately yung heart nagwi-weaken na siya, it may eventually fail. Under such conditions na hindi na gumagana yung pag-open and close ng valve, hindi niya na papanatili yung one-way direction ng blood flow sa heart, kailangan ma-replace yung faulty valve. Paano siya nare-replace? Number one is the usual, which is replacement with a synthetic valve, prosthetic heart valve as shown in the photo. Or number two, maaring may cryopreserved human valve from a donor. Or number three, a chemically treated valve taken from an animal, usually a pig's heart. Recalling now the four chambers, the four great vessels, and the four valves all working together, let us now remember or learn how blood flows in and out of the heart. Tandaan, one-way direction lang ito. 
First and foremost, yung unoxygenated blood na ginamit lahat ng cells ng ating katawan coming from the systemic circulation will enter the heart via the vena cava, superior and inferior vena cava. So, dyan lahat nag-uumpisa. And then, what do we say about the right atrium? Atria collects. So, kinokollect niya yung unoxygenated blood coming from the vena cava. Vena cava, di ba, is a vein. So, ang movement ng dugo niya ay papasok ng heart na tinatanggap nga ng right atrium. Now, as the right atrium collects the unoxygenated blood, nagbubukas ang tricuspid valve, sarado ang pulmonary valve. So, bumababa yung unoxygenated blood sa right ventricle. The right ventricle now, if it is filled, it will pump. Right ventricle, ventricle pumps. When the right ventricle pumps unoxygenated blood, magsasara ang tricuspid valve, bubukas ang pulmonary valve. Kaya yung pinump niya na unoxygenated blood, dadaan ngayon ng pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery, movement of blood is away from the heart, it carries unoxygenated blood. Papasok ngayon ito ng pulmonary circulation. And yung unoxygenated blood, pagdating sa lungs, magiging oxygenated. So, as the lungs uh, has made the blood oxygenated because gas exchange occurred, yung oxygenated blood ngayon will now enter the pulmonary vein. Si pulmonary vein, ang movement ng dugo dyan, towards the heart. And then, it's connected now to the left atrium. The left atrium is a collecting chamber. This time, anong kinokollect niya? It's oxygenated blood. So, habang nagkokollect siya ng oxygenated blood, bukas ang mitral valve at sarado yung aortic valve as it fills the left ventricle. The left ventricle, once it's ready to pump, the aortic valve opens and the mitral valve closes. So when the left ventricle pumps blood, which is oxygenated blood, bubukas ang aortic valve, sasarado ang mitral valve to deliver oxygenated blood to the aorta. The aorta now carries oxygenated blood going to the system as it enters the systemic circulation para gamitin ng lahat ng body cells yung oxygenated blood. And once again, lahat ng cells na yon pag ginamit yung oxygenated blood, will become unoxygenated. At babalik ulit sa vena cava. And tuloy-tuloy yung direction na yon. That's how blood flows in and out of the heart. This is the same with the previous slide. It's just that the ones mentioned here, uh, instead of the photo, are the actual chambers, which are in red, the great vessels in green, and the valves in violet, all working together. The body cells and the lungs in black represent the systemic and the pulmonic circulation, respectively. So again, this is the direction of blood as it enters the heart as an unoxygenated blood and exits the heart as oxygenated blood. The heart, being one of the organs of the systemic circulation, also needs oxygenated blood. So it can perform its functions, which is to pump blood. Now, yung oxygenated blood na nanggagaling sa aorta ay uh, pumupunta rin sa heart through the cardiac arteries. And then, ginagamit ng heart yung oxygenated blood na daladala ng cardiac arteries in the systemic circulation para makafunction yung heart. Pag ginamit siya ng heart, nagiging anoxy blood siya and it travels back now to the vena cava 
through the cardiac veins following the same blood flow. Arterial blood flow problems to the heart may lead to serious conditions, either angina pectoris or myocardial infarction. Si angina pectoris merong insufficient oxygen supply, kaya nagkakaroon ng uh, problem sa heart resulting in a crushing chest pain. In the photo, you can see na isa sa posibleng dahilan ay dahil merong blood vessel na sumikip, kaya yung blood flow ay hindi ganoon ka-enough. It could be a mild heart attack. But the other one is a more bigger or a bigger problem which is myocardial infarction wherein dito hindi lang insufficient yung oxygen but there is total deprivation and in this case the heart cells once it's deprived of oxygen will call cell death will cause cell death in the photo naman we can see na isa sa posibleng dahilan kaya may oxygen deprivation is because of a total blockage of blood flow it's uh, the presence of a clot in that scenario. Ito yung tinatawag natin na heart attack. In terms of intrinsic conduction, the question is, what makes the heart beat or who initiates every heartbeat? Two systems act to actually regulate the heart activity. Number one are the nerves of the autonomic nervous system. They act like brakes and gas pedals to either decrease or increase the heart rate depending on which division is activated. So please recall here the systemic or the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous stimulation. The other system which regulates the heart activity is the intrinsic conduction system or the nodal system. This is built into the heart tissues and it sets a basic rhythm which causes heart muscle depolarization or contraction in only one direction, which is from the atria to the ventricles. Yung conduction nag occur in sequence from 1 to 4, initiated by first the SA node or the sinoatrial node, second is the atrioventricular node or the AV node. Third is the atrioventricular bundle, the AV bundle or the bundle of His. And lastly is the Perkin J fibers. The SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. Nandoon siya sa junction ng superior vena cava and right atrium. Diba? The right atrium is where the blood starts to enter dahil siya yung nagko-collect ng unoxygenated blood from the vena cava. It generates electrical impulses kaya ang ating normal heart rate ay 60 to 100 beats per minute. And again, isa sa nagko-control sa kanya ay ang sympathetic at ang parasympathetic nervous system. Being the pacemaker of the heart, pag may problems ang SA node, usually nangangailangan ang patient ng cardiac pacemaker if in case the SA node fails to function. The AV node, on the other hand, nasa lower aspect ng atrial septum, tumatanggap siya ng impulses from the SA node. The bundle of His fuses with the AV node to form another pacemaker site. If the SA node fails, kayang mag-sustain ng bundle of His ng 40 to 60 beats per minute na heart rate. But of course, that is not normal. Ang kailangan natin at least 60 to 100 para makapag-deliver ng uh, pumping action yung heart, oxygenated blood to all the cells of the body. And lastly, Perkin J fibers, this is the fused network of conducting strands beneath the ventricular endocardium. They rapidly spread the wave of depolarization throughout the ventricles. The ventricles are very important because they are the pumping chambers. Remember that the activation of the ventricles begins in the septum and moves from the apex upward. 
within the ventricular walls, depolarization is from endocardium to epicardium. And repolarization, on the other hand, is in reverse. So that the last cells to depolarize are the first ones to repolarize. When we talk about depolarization and repolarization, remember its differences. Depolarize is contract. Repolarize is relax. What else? Depolarize is systole. Repolarize is diastole. What else? Depolarize is similar to S1. Repolarize is similar to S2. And lastly, yung heart sounds na lub dub. Lub is depolarize, dub is repolarize. So, almost synonymous ang mga salitang depolarization, contraction, systole, S1, and lub. Synonymous din ang repolarization, relaxation, diastole, S2, and dub. What are the cardiac cycle and the sound? So, as mentioned a while ago, systole is the contraction, diastole is the relaxation. One complete heartbeat is where atria and ventricles both contract, then relax. It is set at 75 beats per minute, usually nasa pagitan ng 60 to 100 acceptable or normal range, about 0.8 seconds per cycle. Bradycardia is slow heartbeat, less than 100, and tachycardia is a fast heartbeat, more than 100. In the photo, we can see electrocardiography. It's a test. The ECG is a test with, which measures the electrical activity of the heart. Specifically, how well the atria and ventricles contract and relax. The heart sounds are the first and the second heart sounds. S1 or lub is the first heart sound. S2 or dub is the second heart sounds. Whenever the AV valves close, ang mga AV valves ay ang tricuspid at ang mitral valve. Yun yung S1. And whenever the semilunar valves close, which is the pulmonic and the aortic valve, yun naman yung sound ng S2. Remember also that S1 is longer than S2. S1 is louder than S2. S2 kasi is a sound that is short and sharp, while S1 is long and loud. When you use a stethoscope, you can hear these two distinct heart sounds. Ang sequence niya, lub dub, pause, lub dub, pause, and so on and so forth. Sa stethoscope, meron siya ang parts na bell and diaphragm. The diaphragm is best for higher pitch sounds, like the breath sounds and normal heart sounds. Usually, we use the bell. It is best for detecting lower pitch sounds, like some heart murmurs and some vowel sounds. So basically, if we are to listen to heart sounds, we will be using the diaphragm of the stethoscope. When one is listening to the heart sounds via auscultation using a stethoscope, it is important to consider that we should place the diaphragm of the stethoscope at the point of maximum impulse. That's the fifth ICS left midclavicular line. How do we locate that? First is to identify the sternal notch and then slide the finger down. That's the angle of Louis. And then, just to the left of that is a space. And that space is the second ICS. Count now the spaces thereafter until you reach the fifth ICS of the left midclavicular line. That's the apical pulse where the mitral valve is. That is the location where to hear best the heart sounds again using the diaphragm of the stethoscope. 
Here now are the other landmarks of the valves that we use when auscultating the heart sounds. Remember, there are four valves, the pulmonary, the aortic, the mitral, and tricuspid. The pulmonary valve is located specifically to hear it best on the second ICS just to the left of the sternum. The aortic valve is also on the second ICS just to the right of the sternum. To hear the tricuspid valve, we put now the stethoscope on the fifth ICS just to the left of the sternum. And again, the mitral valve location to hear it best, that's the point of maximum impulse, the apical pulse on the fifth ICS left midclavicular line. Now, what are the other normal findings when we are to check for the heart? We use the methods of inspection, palpation, and again, the auscultation. When we inspect, the pericordium should be flat. When we palpate, the area of the precordium, there should be no heaves or thrills. What are heaves? These are palpable large beating of the heart. Pag kinapa mo, may pumipintig. What are thrills? These are the palpable vibrations usually from a heart murmur. It's an abnormal heart sound. Ito naman yung pag kinapa mo, nanginginig. And then, when we are listening for the heart sounds again, through auscultation, the rate should be within 60 to 100 beats per minute. The rhythm should be regular. Tuloy-tuloy ang tunog ng lub the pos lub the pos and so on and so forth. Again, PMI located correctly at the 5th ICS left midclavicular line. Other normal findings when we auscultate is that the S1 is louder and stronger than S2 and no heart sounds that are abnormal, no murmurs. Another important concept when we talk about the heart is the cardiac output. A healthy heart pumps out about 60% of the blood present in its ventricles. And to consider the cardiac output, it is important that stroke volume is regulated. What is stroke volume? It's the amount of blood pumped by each ventricle for every heartbeat or for every lub dub. Normally, it is 70 ml per beat or within a range of 50 to 100. To regulate stroke volume, three things are important. First is the Starling's law of the heart. Dito nakadepende gaano kagaling mag-contract cardiac muscles. Gano siya kagaling mag-stretch so that effective ang kanyang contraction. Another is the venous return. When you say venous return, gaano kadami yung unoxygenated blood na bumabalik sa heart. Of course, yung dami ng ilalabas niya ay nakadepende sa dami ng pumapasok sa kanya. That's the venous return. And lastly, the muscular pump. It's the squeezing action of the active skeletal muscles. Why? Because all of the blood that has transported or traveled the entire systemic circulation should go back to the heart. And therefore, yung mga skeletal muscles, when they contract also, may kinalaman din yung Pagbalik ng lahat ng dugo, papunta ng heart. Cardiac output, again, is important when we are talking about how much the heart produces blood. But when we talk about production, yung inilalabas niya na dugo whenever the ventricles contract. Therefore, it is the amount of blood being pumped by each ventricle every one minute. Kanina, we have discussed stroke volume. Stroke volume is the same, but we are talking about the amount of blood pumped by each ventricle for every heartbeat. But if we are talking about for every one minute, that's the cardiac output. To compute the cardiac output, it is basically the heart rate times the stroke volume. 
or CO equals HR times SV. HR or heart rate is approximately 60 to 100 beats per minute or on the average, 75. While stroke volume is approximately 70 ml per beat. Therefore, ang cardiac output is around 5 to 20 5.25 liter per minute. There's a range of about 4 to 6 liters. Ito ang cardiac output ng isang average size adult. Again, the normal adult blood volume is about 4 to 6 liters. So nearly yung entire blood supply, it passes through the body once for each minute. Cardiac output also varies with the demands of the body. Usually, nag increase ito kapag ang stroke volume ay nag increase or ang heart nag-beat ng mas mabilis. nag -de decrease naman siya when the stroke volume also decreases or if the heart rate is slower. Again, cardiac output, gano karami yung lumalabas na dugo sa puso every time it pumps for every one minute. And always consider cardiac output should equal the venous return. Dahil yung venous return, gano karami ang bumabalik sa puso via the vena cava. So whatever the venous return is, greatly depending yung cardiac output sa kanya. So cardiac output should equal venous return. Several factors also modify the heart rate and stroke volume, which in turn, again, it affects the cardiac output. This includes, number one, yung autonomic nervous system, sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system. It also is uh, modified by some hormones and ions and also yung ating mga physical activity. If with heart, circulatory, or blood diseases or conditions, yung cardiac output also may be affected. Kaya meron tayong nursing diagnosis na decrease cardiac output. The pumping action of the healthy heart maintains a balance between the cardiac output and venous return, as mentioned earlier. Pero, the heart kasi, kung nahihirapan siya, it still compensates by beating faster. Tuloy-tuloy siyang tumitibok kahit nahihirapan na siya. But when the pumping efficiency of the heart is reduced so that circulation is inadequate to meet the tissue needs, congestive heart failure occurs. So ano ang congestive heart failure? There's already an inability of the heart to pump blood effectively. Kaya isa sa very early signs na may CHF ang isang tao ay tachycardia. Kasi tibok ng tibok ang puso, nagko-compensate siya, pero nahihirapan na siya. Two basic problems are seen in a person with CHF. First is congestion and second is heart failure. That's why in the photo there, we see congestion of the heart. Kasi kahit pump siya ng pump, hindi niya na ilalabas ng maayos yung dugo kasi hindi na ganun kagaling ang pumping activity niya. That's why there's a heart failure because it doesn't pump blood effectively. Next are the blood vessels. Blood circulates inside the blood vessels which form a closed transport system which we call the vascular system. There are three walls of the blood vessels. Ito yung mga tunics. We have tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia. Yung tunica intima, innermost layer. The tunica media is the middle layer where muscle cells are found. Kaya ito din yung responsible for the contraction of the blood vessel nagko-contract din ang blood vessel to allow movement of blood inside. And lastly, tunica adventitia. There are three significant blood vessel types. We have the arteries, we have the veins, and we have the capillaries. As mentioned earlier, pag sinabing arteries, ang movement ng dugo dito away from the heart. 
high pressure, walls are thicker and heavier. Pag sinabing veins, ang movement ng dugo towards the heart. Low pressure ito, walls are thinner and lighter. What about the capillaries? The capillaries has transparent walls. And unlike arteries and veins na may tatlong tunics, ang capillaries isang layer lang, which is tunica intima. At dahil iisa lang ang layer ng capillaries, madali ang exchanges dito. Exchanges made between the blood and tissue cells. So if we are talking about the capillaries of the systemic circulation, dito nangyayari yung exchanges ng oxygenated blood to unoxygenated blood. When we are talking naman about the capillaries of the pulmonary system, and dito naman yung exchanges between unoxygenated blood to oxygenated blood in the lungs. And these tiny capillaries, they form interweaving networks which we call the capillary beds where the exchanges actually occur. Here we see the systemic circulation to further explain what happens within the blood vessels. Yung pulmonic circulation, we were able to discuss it briefly, but it will be discussed further sa respiratory system topic. So here, in the systemic circulation, we see the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries. Smaller arteries are arterioles, smaller veins are venules. It's a network, tuloy-tuloy siya. Again, artery, away from the heart. Kaya yung nakikita nating photo, yung dugo na nandiyan sa artery coming from the aorta which means oxygenated blood ang dala niya. Doon naman sa vein, we can see that the travel is going back to the heart via the vena cava. That's why ang dala niyang dugo ang oxygenated blood. Now, here are the great vessels, the aorta and the vena cava. The aorta is the biggest artery, and the vena cava is the biggest vein. Aorta has four branches. We have the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, thoracic aorta, and abdominal aorta. Well, the vena cava has two branches, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Now, we have to recall again, when we discuss the blood, that we are always wanting to make sure na walang thrombolus at walang embolus sa mga blood vessels. Otherwise, magkakaroon ng clot or problems with how the blood flows through these great vessels. Here are the major arteries. The ones in the middle is the biggest artery, which is the aorta from the ascending to the aortic arch to the thoracic aorta and to the abdominal aorta depicted by color red which means it delivers oxygenated blood to all the systems of the body here are the major veins we have the biggest one in the middle of the body superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and depicted by color blue which means it um, carries unoxygenated blood which gets blood and delivers it back to the heart. Here now are the special circulations of the body. The arterial supply of the brain and circle of willis, fetal circulation, and hepatic portal circulation. The brain has a very special circulation because a lack of blood for even a few minutes causes the delicate brain cells to die. A continuous blood supply to the brain is very crucial. The brain is actually supplied by two pairs of arteries, the internal carotid artery and the vertebral arteries. So itong mga ito, these are small communicating arterial branches which unite anterior and posterior blood supplies of the brain. It surrounds the base of the brain and is very important because it provides more than one route for blood to reach brain tissue, especially in cases of a clot or magkaroon man ng impaired blood flow. Another special circulation is the fetal circulation. 
when we say fetal circulation or fetus, ito yung baby sa loob ng uterus ni mommy. This is very special because fetal lungs does not function. Hindi nag-i-inhale at exhale ang fetus sa loob ng uterus. So saan ang gagaling yung kanyang oxygen supply? Sa placenta. It gives oxygenated blood in. It also receives an oxygenated blood and waste products. Now, as you can see in the photo, nandiyan yung fetal heart. And then, on the other side is the placenta. It is connected by the umbilical cord. There are two arteries and one vein in an umbilical cord, o yung puso ng baby. The umbilical arteries, ang movement ng dugo dito, away from the fetal heart. Ang dala niya, an oxygenated blood from the fetal heart to the placenta. Bakit an oxygenated blood ang dala ng umbilical artery? Because wala namang function yung lungs ng baby, kaya hindi doon nang gagaling yung oxygen. Instead, galing siya ng placenta. Yung umbilical vein naman, it's towards the fetal heart. Siya ang nagdadala ngayon ng oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetal heart. Therefore, magkaiba yung pinag-uusapan natin na arteries and veins ng systemic circulation compared to the umbilical arteries and umbilical vein. Mainly because galing ang oxygen sa placenta na naka-attach kay mommy na siyang nagde-deliver ng na oxygenated blood papasok sa heart ng baby. Now, in the photo, you will also see the ductus venosus. The ductus venosus connects the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava of the heart of the baby. Kaya vena cava pa lang ng baby may oxygenated blood na, which is very different from that of an adult tayo wala tayong oxygenated blood sa vena cava. All are unoxygenated. There are other two important structures sa fetal heart. Yun yung foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus. Foramen ovale is an opening between the right and the left atrium. So imagine, kung may opening sa right and left atrium, let's again recall the blood flow in and out of the heart. Pagpasok, ng dugo sa right atrium, kung may buta sa gitna nila ng left atrium, maaari nang dumiretsyo ang dugong yon sa left atrium. Which is okay because as mentioned a while ago, yung vena cava pa lang ng fetal heart may oxygenated blood na. Kaya kung dumiretsyo from left atrium, I mean from right atrium to left atrium, yung oxygenated blood na pumasok, that's okay. Ano ang na-bypass because of the foramen ovale? Hindi na nadaanan yung tricuspid valve, hindi na nadaanan yung right ventricle, hindi na nadaanan yung pulmonic valve, hindi na nadaanan ang pulmonary artery, ang lungs, at ang pulmonary vein. So, diretsyo na siya yung oxy blood from the right atrium to the left atrium. What about the ductus arteriosus? The ductus arteriosus is the communication between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So here, hindi naman porket may mga pumasok na oxygenated blood sa right atrium, e eh wala nang bababa sa right ventricle kasi hindi naman sarado ang tricuspid valve. So may bumababa pa rin na oxy blood from right atrium, tricuspid valve to right ventricle. As the right ventricle pumps oxygenated blood, dadaan ngayon siya ng pulmonary valve to the pulmonary artery. Pero pagdating ng pulmonary artery dahil merong ductus arteriosus, saan didiretso ang dugo? Didiretso na siya sa aorta. So ano naman ang binaypass this time? Ang binaypass ng dugo dahil sa ductus arteriosus, hindi na siya dumaan ng lungs, hindi na siya dumaan ng pulmonary vein, hindi na siya dumaan ng left atrium, mitral valve, 
left ventricle and aortic valve. Dumiretso na agad siya sa aorta. So, these two structures, foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus, may mga binabypass ang dugo dahil sa kanila. Inaalaw nila yung faster blood flow inside the fetal heart, which is okay because there's no need na naman talaga for this blood to reach the lungs kasi oxygenated na siya in the first place plus hindi naman gumagana yung lungs ng fetus. But when the baby is born, of course, these structures will eventually be cut when the placenta uh, also is detached. So, mawawala lahat yung structures na yan. Another is the hepatic portal circulation. Veins of the hepatic portal circulation drain the digestive organs, the spleen, the pancreas, and deliver this blood to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. So, pag tayo kumain, obviously, yung ating hepatic blood contains large amounts of nutrients. This system should now take a detour to ensure na napoproseso ito ng liver bago siya makapasok sa ating body cells. So these are veins. And if you think about it, veins contain unoxygenated blood. But this blood, even if they are unoxygenated, they contain large amounts of nutrients because nutrients come from the GI organs. And aside from that, meron din dyang mga toxins na naabsorb ng GI organ. Kaya kailangan siya munang iproseso ng liver. Liver is then drained by the hepatic veins. Now, it will enter the inferior vena cava. Kaya yung pumapasok sa blood, or I mean pumapasok sa ating heart, it contains already the nutrients that will be pumped by the heart papunta ulit ng systemic circulation. What is a pulse? Ang pulse, it's a pressure wave that travels the entire arterial system. It's created from alternating expansion and recoil of an artery that occurs with each beat of the left ventricle. Why left ventricle? Nakafocus ito dito because the left ventricle is the one pumping oxygenated blood to the system. A fairly good indication of the efficiency of a person's circulatory system can be obtained by taking this arterial pulse together with the blood pressure. Itong measurements na ito, along with the respiratory rate and the body temperature, we collectively call them the vital signs in clinical setting. So ano ang ating mga pulses? Encephalocaudal order from head to toe. Temporal pulse, facial pulse, carotid pulse, brachial pulse, radial pulse, femoral or inguinal pulse, popliteal pulse, the dorsalis pedis pulse, and the posterior tibialis pulse. Na-assess natin ito because we do palpation. And when we palpate, Relatively, pareho dapat yung tibok niya dun sa tibok ng apical pulse, which is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Another, syempre dapat strong. Hindi dapat siya weak, hindi siya absent, hindi siya bounding, and hindi siya very bounding. The rhythm should be regular, which means tuloy-tuloy dapat yung pintig, hindi dapat humihinto. It should be symmetric. All pulses are on both sides of the body. May kanan, may kaliwa. So, syempre, dapat pantay sila. And, dahil nga pinalpate natin siya, dahil nagkocontain siya ng oxygenated blood, dapat warm to touch. Hindi dapat siya cold to touch. And lastly, is the blood pressure. Blood pressure is the pressure that the blood exerts against the inner walls of the arteries. Here, we are also talking about the arteries because it carries oxygenated blood. And it is the force that keeps the blood circulating continuously, even between heartbeats. The normal blood pressure is 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury or MMHG. 
Systolic is contraction. Diastolic is relaxation. Now, we need stethoscope and sphygmomanometer to measure BT. And we use the diaphragm of the stethoscope to listen to the Korotkov sounds. Yung Korotkov sounds, yan yung pressure read sa first soft tapping sound na marinig natin. Uh, it's the first point at which a small amount of blood is spurting through the constricted artery and we record that as the systolic pressure. Yung diastolic naman, as the pressure is reduced still further, the sounds become louder, more distinct. When the artery is no longer constricted, kasi in-inflate natin yung BP cuff, the blood flows freely, the sounds can no longer be heard. Kung saan natin narinig na huminto yung sound, that's the diastolic pressure. This will be taught to you sa fundamentals of nursing. So it's very important that nurses know how to read blood pressure. That's the end of today's discussion. Thank you very much.